Let there be rivers of refreshing. Let there be rivers of refreshing, God. Oh, come into this place, God. Come into our home, God. Come into our neighborhood, God. Come into our work, God. Come into our city, God. Come into this nation, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, you're mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty, Jesus. I declare your glory, God. I declare your anointing, oh God. Open the floodgates of heaven, God. Hallelujah. Rain, God. Rain in this place, God. Rain in this place, God. Oh, I come to worship you. I come to magnify you, God. I come to lift up holy hands, oh God. Oh, you're great, Jesus. You are mighty, oh God. Oh, just lift up your hands. Did you come with expectation this morning? Did you come with expectation this morning? Did you come with a need this morning? Did you come broken and weary? Hallelujah. Did you come desperate? Oh, for God, he wants to touch you. He wants to revive you. He wants to be your hope. He wants to be your rock and your strong tower. He wants to be the banner over you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we lose your presence. We lose your presence. We lose the Holy Ghost, oh God. I lose the Holy Ghost, oh God, over every heart, over every soul, God. Let there be a fresh wind, oh God. Let there be a fresh anointing, oh God. Oh, let it fill the room, oh God. Let it fill the room, God. Oh, God is mighty. He is mighty. He is worthy to be praised.
on. Does someone just want to give him everything this morning? Did anyone come this morning just wanting to pour your all out before God? Oh, God, we give you all of us today, Jesus. Lord, every part of me this morning, God.
your hands, lift your voices to him this morning. I give all myself to you today, Lord. I'm not withholding anything from you. Have your will in my life. Have your way in my soul today, God. We love you. We praise you. We exalt you. We entertain your presence today, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, reach after him. Call his name out this morning. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I give all myself to you, Lord. I give all myself to you today, God. I'm withholding nothing. Praise God. Clap your hands, make a joyful noise unto him. Amen. Let's continue to worship. We're going to receive our tithe and offering as they continue to sing. Come and bring your offering as a form of your worship to the Lord. Let's worship the Lord this morning.
Come on, lift up your hands, lift up your voice. Withholding nothing from you today, God. Hallelujah. Come on, reach out after him, touch him this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you today, Lord. I praise you this morning. I give all myself to you today, God. Why don't you just make that declaration this morning? Father, I give you all of myself today. All my heart, all my soul, all my strength. I'm withholding nothing from you today, God. I love you, Jesus. I praise you today, God. I bless you this morning, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. I give all myself to you today, God. Come on, reach after him. Press through. Let him touch you today. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. That's it. Give him a clap offering of praise. Lift up his name. Magnify him. A little more monitor, please. Praise God. Praise God. I'm withholding nothing. I give all myself to you, Lord. You can turn me down out there and turn me up up here, please. I give all myself to you today, God. Withholding nothing. That's what God wants today. God wants all your heart. God wants all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Amen. He doesn't want you to withhold anything from him. Amen. He doesn't want you to withhold anything from him. Praise God. Clap your hands. Make a joyful noise to him. Have your Bibles this morning. Turn with us to Acts chapter 2. Amen. Most of you can quote the verse of scripture, verse 38, as you're turning there. I'd like to remind you that on the 20th, we'll be having an outdoor service. Amen. Stronger together. We are stronger together. Amen. One can put 1,000 to flight. Two can put 10,000 to flight. I pray that you invite somebody to come to church with you. Amen. The Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves, and a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Amen. So we are stronger together. Amen. So we're calling all of our church. Amen. If you haven't been here because you don't want to meet inside, I'm asking all of you watching at home to be here September 20th when we come back as a church family. Amen. Praise God. God wants to do something powerful. God wants to do something mighty in us. Amen. And we are stronger together when we join hands and we pull down strongholds together. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. 
Amen. Let's go to our word this morning, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. The, most of you can quote it. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name, what name? The name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Go on down to the next verse, verse 39. Praise God. For the promise is unto you. Say, the promise is unto me. And to your children and to all them that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The promise is to you. The promise is to your children. Amen. Aren't you glad for the promises of God today? Amen. I want to preach to you about the gift of the Holy Spirit this morning. Amen. God wants to pour out His Spirit amongst us today. Amen. Lift your hands and lift your voices with me. Father, we pray today, Lord, not our will, but thine be done. Pour out your power. Pour out your glory. Pour out your anointing upon us, I pray. Let there be a demonstration of the Holy Ghost. I pray, touch every heart. Hallelujah. Touch every mind. Touch every soul today. Help us to surrender to your presence, Father. Let that well of living water, let it bubble up on the inside of our soul. And I pray, God, have your perfect will and your perfect way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say amen. Amen. You may be seated. Notice the scripture says that God has promised, not the church, not me, but God has promised the Holy Ghost to those who have repented of their sins and been baptized in his name. Notice he says it is a gift, the gift of the Holy Ghost or the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, I will use the term spirit and ghost interchangeably because they are one and the same. Amen. Hallelujah. We get freaked out sometimes when we talk about ghost. Amen. But it's talking about the spirit of God. God has promised the gift of his spirit to not only move upon us, but to live within us. Nobody's excited about that. Come on. If you're an apostolic, you ought to lift up your hand. You ought to lift up your voice. You ought to thank God today that God has filled you with his power and God has filled you with his presence. Amen. Because without him, the Bible says, I can do nothing. I need him. I need his power. I need his anointing to live a life over sin. You've heard me preach on many occasions. Amen. You don't get right to get God, but you get God to get right. Because the truth of the matter is this morning, without the Holy Ghost or without his presence in our lives, we don't have the power over sin. But when Jesus comes into our hearts and he puts, uh, pushes out all the darkness out of our hearts and shines the light of his spirit on the inside, amen, hallelujah, he said, perfect love casteth out all fear. Perfect love casteth out all darkness, amen, hallelujah. When Jesus comes in, the darkness dissipates. Come on, somebody. When Jesus comes in, depression has got to go. When Jesus comes in, faith comes on the scene. When Jesus comes in, peace begins to rule and to reign in my heart and in my mind and in my soul. Amen. And the things that I could not do before, I am now able to do, not because of me, but because it's him living in me. I can be an overcomer. I can live victorious. 
is. I can be what God wants me to be because no longer am I bound to sin and darkness. I've been set free by the blood of the Lamb. I've received the Spirit of God. Amen. Acts 4 and 12 tells us, ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You have power over sin. You have power over the devil. You had power over the things of this world. He said, hallelujah, greater things than this shall ye do. Ye shall cast out devils in my name. Ye shall lay hands on the sick in my name, and they shall recover. Amen. There's no thing that's impossible for us if we have his power and we have his spirit living on the inside. Clap your hands. Make a joyful noise to him. We need the gift of the Holy Ghost. I meant to give something away this morning, but I didn't bring it with. Yeah, I will. I will. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I've got $10 up here. Pulled it out of my pocket just now. $10 to the first one that comes up here and gets it. <clears throat> Brother Gene, you were a second. Come on up. I'm going to give you $5 for good effort. Amen. There's you some gas money. Amen. Amen. Praise God. My point being is God has got a gift for you, but if you don't come and get it, it does you absolutely no good. Amen. You got to be hungry for the gift. You got to want the gift. You got to come after the gift. You can't sit back and say, oh, maybe someday. Amen. But you got to come. Amen. He said, I've got a gift that I want to give to every man, woman, boy, and girl. And all you got to do is come and get it. Come and get the gift that God wants to give you. Come and get the power. Come and get the peace. Come and get the faith of God. Come and get the power of God. Praise God. Because without it, we are handicapped. Amen. Without it, we can't do it by ourselves. I need him. Say, I need him. I need him today. Amen. Turn with me to Acts chapter 10, verse 44. The Bible tells us, When Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them. Say all. all. The Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Verse 45, And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. The, those of the circumcision were the Jews. Amen. And as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. So it wasn't just to a select group of people. And for those that say it was just for the apostles, then the word of God must be incorrect. Because not only did the apostles receive it, not only did the Jews receive it, but now the Gentiles have received it. Verse 46, how did they know they got it? For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Ha <laughs> ha. They heard them speak with tongues. Amen. I've said it many times. If you want the Holy Ghost, you got to open your mouth. You're never going to get the Holy Ghost doing this. Amen. But if you're hungry for it, if you're thirsting after it, if you come to the well that never runs dry and you pursue the Lord, guess what? The Lord's going to show up. Amen. Hallelujah. He's going to feed the hungry. Amen. They heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. And Peter said, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Amen. And he commanded them to be baptized 
in the name of the Lord. What is that name? Jesus, the name that is above every other name. And he said, then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Guess what? The greatest news to you and I today is that God poured out his spirit, not only to the Jew, but also to the Gentile. And if you don't realize it today, you and I are Gentiles. Amen. God is still pouring out his spirit this morning to all those that are hungry and all those that are thirsting and all those that are desiring the move of God in their life. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. He said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith, say faith. Faith Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Amen. You can't see the Holy Ghost. You can't touch the Holy Ghost, but you can certainly feel the Spirit of God. Amen. Verse 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Who? God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. God will reward you with his power and God will reward you with his spirit if you will but seek him. He said, seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Ask and it shall be given unto you to you when we come to God as we sing this morning I'm totally surrendered to you God hallelujah I don't care what other people think I'm going to lift my hands and praise to you I'm going to worship you I'm going to bless you and it's in the middle of your praise it's in the middle of your worship it's in the middle of that that God pours out his power and God gives you the gift of the Holy Ghost because he's looking for somebody to worship worship him. He's looking for somebody to lift up holy hands in the sanctuary. He's looking for somebody that's hungering for a move of God and thirsting for the the indwelling of his spirit. Hallelujah. And it's a gift. All you got to do is come and get it. You came and made the effort to come to church this morning. Why not give God everything that you've got and say, God, I'm going to give you my best because I'm expecting your best and I need your touch and I need your power and I need your spirit and I need your anointing today. Say, now faith. faith. Amen. Now faith means that I am confident. Amen. That what I am hoping for, that I am convinced of what I do not see, is going to happen. In other words, I believe the word of God. I make up in my mind that I'm going to come down to this altar today and I'm going to lift my hands and I believe that God's going to fill me. Amen. There's another scripture that says, according to your faith, so be it unto you. Amen. I remember the story my wife tells about her father and her as she was a little girl. Amen. Littler than she is now, anyway. Amen. And I mean not not size, but age-wise. Amen. Brother Billy Cole came to their church. Amen. Hallelujah. And preached about receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. And he said, all of you that want to receive the Holy Ghost, come down. And he used to line chairs up in, in the front of the altar. And he says, I want you to come down and sit in one of these chairs. Amen. I think if I tell it right, she can correct me later. Amen. But I think they both came and sat down in the chairs. Amen. 
And then I think he said something like, if you don't believe you're going to get it tonight, go back and sit down. And her dad got up and went back to his chair because he didn't believe that he was going to get the Holy Ghost that night. Amen. But Carrie, my wife, I should say Sister Overton, amen, she stayed and she continued to pray and seek God. She wanted the Holy Ghost. And guess what? God gave her the Holy Ghost that night. God poured out his spirit upon her that night. Amen. And her dad got so excited about watching his daughter get the Holy Ghost that he got up from his chair back there and walked down to where she was, and he got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because he, amen, was rejoicing in what God had done for her. I'm here to tell you, amen, nothing can stop you from receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. All the devils in hell can't stop you from receiving the Holy Ghost. God wants to pour out his power. God wants to pour out his spirit. God wants to fill you. God wants you to be powerful. God wants you, amen, to walk in the power of his might. He doesn't want us trying to live this thing by ourselves. Amen. And I want to just say something to you that have the Holy Ghost and you don't think this message applies to you this morning. You need to be renewed in the Holy Holy Ghost. Amen. It's not a one-time event, but you need to be renewed in the Spirit because I need them every day. It's all right with me if I renew myself in the Spirit every day or God renews me in the Spirit. I need Him. I need Him. I need Him. I need Him. It's a gift from God. It's a gift from God. God wants to give you His most precious gift. All you got to do, it's Take it, take it, take it. Come and receive it. Amen. The Bible tells us on the day of Pentecost, they were gathered together in the upper room. The Holy Ghost had not been yet been given. But the Bible said, amen, if you read your Bible, they tarried almost 10 days. They waited for the promise that Jesus told them was to come. If you wait more than 10 minutes, you give up. But they waited 10 days, and they prayed, and they waited on God, and they prayed, and they waited on God, and they prayed, and they waited on God, and God is looking for some folks in 2020 that will pray and wait upon God. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to wait. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to wait. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to wait, because God's never lied to me. God won't let me down. God is going to come through. Yeah, hallelujah. He never told us something that he's not done. He's not a liar. God God is on the throne and God is ready and able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that you think or ask. <clears throat> I'm going to pray and wait. And the Bible says there came a sound from heaven, amen, of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And it says, and they were all, say all, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what God wants to do in this last day and hour. He doesn't want to just fill a couple of you. He wants to fill all of us. He wants to pour out his spirit. The prophet Joel said, this is that, the, or Peter said, this is that that the prophet Joel prophesied about. In the last day, saith the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. I've come to tell somebody the Holy Ghost is for you. The power is for you. The anointing is for you. Amen. You can't do it in your flesh. You need Jesus. You can't see the wind. You can't touch the wind. But you can certainly feel the effects of the wind. And that's how the Holy Ghost is. You can't see the Spirit of God. You can't 
physically touch the Spirit of God. But when He comes into your life without a question of a doubt, you are going to respond. Amen. And then He said it's going to be like a well, a living water springing up from the abundance of your soul. Amen. So how do they know that they receive the Holy Ghost? Amen. In Acts 10 here, He said they heard them speak with new tongue. Amen. They heard them speak in a heavenly language. They heard them speak in a tongue that they had never learned before. Amen. Amen. That's exactly what happened on the day of Pentecost. Amen. When they were gathered together in that upper room. Amen. The people of the city gathered around. They said, these men are drunk. But Peter said, these men are not drunk as ye suppose, seeing that this is but the third hour of the day. He said, but this is that, that the prophet Joel prophesied about. He said, I want to tell the church, amen, God is in the people business, and God is in the soul winning business, and the purpose of the church in 20 and 20 has not changed. God still wants to fill people. God still wants to pour out his power. God still wants his people to be filled with his spirit. Amen. Well, you say, well, what about the scripture that says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved? Well, I believe the scripture. But is believing enough? Hello? Because it doesn't say you are saved. It says you shall be saved. Amen. Amen. It's wonderful that you believe. But the scripture also says that the devils in hell believe and tremble. So believing in itself is not enough. James said, faith without works is dead. If you will truly believe, then you will be motivated to act. Upon the word of God. It's not my word. It's not this church's doctrine. It's the word of God. I'm going to say it again. It's not the church's doctrine. It's not my doctrine. It's the word of God. Open your Bible and read it for yourself. Amen. Jesus said you must be. You got to be born again. Of the water and of the spirit of God. you got to first believe that God wants to give you the Holy Ghost. Amen. I said God wants to give you the Holy Ghost. The gift is for you. All you got to do is come and get it. Amen. In other words, you got to receive the gift. Amen. Amen. And if I'd had that gift wrapped up in a box this morning, you could have took the gift home and sat it on the shelf and said, isn't that a pretty box and isn't that a pretty bow? And still the gift would do you no good. But once you open the gift, hello, once you utilize the gift, amen, amen. I gave Sister Mia a, a bill. I think it's a $10 bill. Yeah, I didn't have a 20. I'm a poor preacher. Amen. But if she just sticks it in her purse and she doesn't use it when she goes to the store, it won't do her any good. Amen. But if she pulls out the gift and she uses it, then she's going to realize the benefit from it. So it is with you and I receiving the Spirit of God. Amen. He doesn't want to just give you a package wrapped in a pretty bow. But he wants you to open up the package. He wants you to internalize the package. He wants you to put the package to use. He wants you to affect the kingdom. He wants to use you in the kingdom. 
I said, God has called you for such a time as this to use you in the kingdom. This world is full of darkness. This world is full of hatred. This world is full of every contemptible thing. And God is trying to empower the church to shine as a shining light in a darkened world that men and women would see the presence of God and the power of God in your life and in my life and they say I need some of that I want some of that amen I want some of that I'm hungry for something that's real they've had all the fake that they can handle they've had all the traditional religion that they can handle amen they've had all the gurus and all the self help programs that they can have it coming out their ears but they need the baptism of the gift of the Holy goes. They need the power of the living God living on the inside of them. Amen. They need God to rise up and dispel the darkness. They need God to rise up and dispel, amen, the doubters and the hatred and everything else. Clap your hands to him. (coughs) Faith is believing. And without faith, you cannot receive him. Amen. But Romans 10, 17 tells us, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word of God. I'm preaching to you the word of God this morning. And whether you realize it or not, faith is being built in your heart. And faith is being built in your mind. And faith is being built in your soul. Hallelujah. Matthew 13, 58. Amen. And he did not many mighty works because of their unbelief. If you don't believe God is going to fill you, he's not going to fill you. If you don't believe that the gift of the Holy Ghost is for you, then it's not for you. But if you will dare step out in the realm of faith and say, God, I I hear the words of the preacher. I hear the words of the man of God. I believe that, amen, the Holy Ghost is for me. And if you'll make that step towards God, God will make a step towards you. And God will fill you. And God will equip you. And God will empower you as you could never even believe before. Praise God. Too often... People are just hoping that they'll receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, if I get it today, that's good. If I don't, that's all right. And some of us, we kind of think like, well, if I just walk down to the altar, I've done my part. No, that's just the beginning. You stepped out in the realm of faith. He said, lift up holy hands in the sanctuary. He said, seek me with all your heart. Seek me with all your mind. He said, confess your faults to me. And I am faithful and just. And you can't confess faults with a closed mouth. Amen. But if you'll start repenting of your sins and asking Jesus to come in, and then you start praising Jesus and thanking Jesus for forgiving you of your sins in the middle of your praise and in the middle of your worship, you'll begin to feel something down on the inside of you that you've never felt before. And you'll begin to get excited. And as you begin to yield to the moving of the Spirit, He's going to bubble up within you and He's going to speak through you and fill you with the baptism of the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. As you yield yourself unto him. Amen. But if you have the attitude that I'll just get it one day, you'll not get it. I hope God will give it to you, to me. You'll not receive it. I'm tired. I'll go to an altar another day. Amen. Are you too tired for God this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm ready whenever God is ready to give it to me. Guess what? God's ready to give it to you. He's been waiting on you. He's been waiting on you. You say you're waiting on him, but he's waiting on you. Because hope is always in the future. And hope produces procrastination. But when faith comes into our hearts. Hello. 
I'm talking to you the difference between hope and faith. When faith comes into your hearts, what Hebrew says, now faith. Say now faith. Now faith says, I'm going to receive it right now. That I believe the promise is unto me. I'm going to receive the gift today. I'm going to receive it right now. Amen. Mark 11 and 24 says, therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when you pray, believe. When you pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Amen. Believe. Now, I got to qualify that. That's not a name it and claim it. Believe whatever, you know, I want a new car, I want a new house. Amen. Because the Bible talks about asking amiss. But you can... When the Bible clearly tells you that the Holy Ghost is for you, and if you believe that you'll receive the Holy Ghost, then you will receive it. Because you are asking according to his will, because it is God's will to fill you with the gift of his spirit. So he says, when you pray, amen, and when you ask and have a desire in your heart and believe that you're going to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost and ye shall have it. But I must also say that the Holy Ghost is a gentleman. God will not force himself on anyone. So don't think that somebody's going to ma- wave a magic wand over you and you're going to receive the Holy Ghost. I can come and pray for you, but I can't give it to you. I have no magic touch. It's not me that gives it or anybody else in this church that gives the Holy Ghost. It's God that gives the Holy Ghost. So don't be waiting for somebody to come pray for you. Seek God with all your heart. Seek God with all your mind. Seek God with all your soul. And seek God with all your strength. Because there's not going to be a lightning bolt from heaven that comes down. Amen. God isn't going to make you speak in tongues. Amen. But he's going to move upon you. Hello? In fact, evil spirits make you do things against your will. God will never make you do anything against your will. Amen. But God will urge you. God will prompt you. God will nudge you. Amen. I say God will urge you. God will prompt you. And God will nudge you. Hallelujah. But it's up to you to respond to the nudge of the Spirit. It's up to you to respond to the promptings of His Spirit. It's up to you to say, Yea, Lord, here am I. I surrender all to you. Praise God. Acts 2 and 4, the Bible says, And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Who did the speaking? They did. The people that were filled did the speaking. Amen. They opened their mouth. And they began to speak, amen, and opening your mouth and beginning to speak is an act of your will. I'll say that again. When you open your mouth and begin to speak, it's an act of your will. But as you surrender to the moving, the urging, and the prompting of God, all of a sudden the Holy Ghost takes over and you begin to speak in a heavenly language as the Spirit of God gives you the utterance. Hallelujah. Amen. Here's some examples. In Acts 10, 46, we, we read earlier, for they heard them speak with tongues 
and magnify God. On the day of Pentecost, they were in the upper room. They heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Amen. Every place where they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. It is a supernatural act. It is a supernatural act. It is an act of God's sovereignty. It is a divine act of God to fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I can't fill you. The church can't fill you. Nobody else can fill you. But if you will yield to the moving and the prompting and the urging of the Spirit, God will fill you with this wonderful gift. The greatest gift that God's ever given to mankind. Clap your hands to him. Some folks want to argue, oh, I received the Holy Ghost when I believed. Well, there's no scripture for that. Show me in the Bible where anybody received the Holy Ghost for believing. Amen, it's not there. And every place they received the Holy Ghost, they spoke in tongues and magnified God. Amen, Acts 19 and 6. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them. The Holy Ghost came on them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Amen. It's on the screen. They opened their mouths and began to speak. Amen. It was an act of their will, and the Holy Ghost did not make them do something against their will. And in every instance, the people are the ones that did the speaking. Hallelujah. So if you're going to receive the Holy Ghost, you got to open your mouth and you got to begin to speak. Amen. And the Holy Ghost will come upon you and it will again urge you and prompt you. Amen. And compel you, if you will. Amen. To yield your body to him. And as you yield your tongue to the moving of the spirit, the Holy Spirit will overtake your tongue. And you will begin to speak in tongues. And you will begin to magnify God. Amen. And that only comes as an act of your faith. Amen. Praise God. There's been some that said that the Holy Ghost is of the devil. (laughs) Well, the devil comes to destroy and God comes to give life. Amen. If you can't tell the difference between God speaking to you and the devil speaking to you, you need to come down here and get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Because the devil speaks doubt And the devil speaks unbelief. And the devil says God will never fill you with his spirit. Amen. And the devil says you're not going to get it tonight. Amen. You're not going to get it today. Why don't you just quit? You're you're a public spectacle. Everybody's watching you. Amen. Hallelujah. But you've got to make up in your mind. You don't care what the devil says. You don't care what anybody else says. This is your day. Hallelujah. I've made up my mind. The Holy Ghost is for me. Amen. And I'm not going to let a devil cheat me out of it. I'm not going to let peer pressure cheat me out of it. I need the Holy Ghost. I need the power of God. I need the Spirit of God. And when you've got a made up mind, I said when you've got a made up mind, says says, God, I'm going to stay here till you fill me with your power. God, I'm going to stay here till you fill me with your Spirit. And God loves to see, amen, a heart that's got a made up mind. Hallelujah. And if you got a made up mind and you've got a heart that'll seek after after God, I'm here to tell you under the authority of the word of God that God's going to pour out his spirit upon you. Amen. And God is going to fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost because it's his good will to give you his present. It's his will to give you his spirit. It's his will to endue you with power from on high. <laughs> Clap your hands to him. <clears throat> Amen. But you got to believe. You got to believe that he's going to do it. Thomas said in John 20, 25, I'll believe it when I see it. Amen. 
He didn't believe that Christ had rose again. I believe it when I see the nail prints in his hand. And what did Jesus say? Thomas, behold, the nail prints. Amen. And what did Thomas say? My Lord and my God. Amen. Faith is not believing when you see it. But faith is believing when you don't see it. Faith says, I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know exactly when it's going to happen. But all I know in my heart is that it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And then Abraham is called the father of the faith. Why? Because Romans 4.17 tells us God said it. Basically what Abraham said. Amen. God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. That's essentially what Abraham said. I, God's word said it. I believe it. And that settles it. Some of you need to get a made up mind. That his word is forever settled in heaven. Amen. It is not up to a private interpretation. And I am not giving you a private interpretation today. I am preaching to you the literal word of God. It's not my word. It's God's word this morning. Hallelujah. And you need a made up mind. If God said it, I believe it. And that's it. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to act on the promise of God. I'm going to believe the promise of God. I'm going to believe the word of God. I'm going to believe the preacher this morning. Now faith. Now faith. Now faith. Today's faith. Romans 4, 21, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Are you fully persuaded today? Are you fully persuaded today? I don't know about you, but I'm fully persuaded that my God can do anything. I'm fully persuaded that it's God's will to pour out his spirit in this last day at an unprecedented rate. Amen. I am fully persuaded. I'm going to step out on the limb this morning. I am fully persuaded that we're about to see sons and daughters born again of the water and the spirit at an unprecedented rate that we have never seen before. God is getting ready to pour out his spirit upon mankind as the latter rain shall be granted. Greater than the former rain. And the spirit of God is getting ready to descend upon the apostolic church at an unprecedented rate. And God is going to fill multitudes. I hear me this morning. God is going to fill multitudes with his spirit. And things are going to be different than they've ever been before. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. I believe it. I believe it. Say, I believe it. If God's word says it, I believe it. The gift isn't based upon how you feel. The gift is based upon the promise of God. And God is not a liar. I said, God is not a liar. You just got to make up your mind you're going to receive the gift. You got to declare within your own heart that the gift is for you and that you're going to receive the gift and receive it even today. Amen. I wonder this morning how many of you would like to receive the gift today? Amen. Faith without works is dead. If you raise your hand, I want you to come to the altar right now. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I want you to come to the altar right now. Hallelujah. Step out from where you're at. Come down to this altar. Amen. Hallelujah. Socially distance yourselves across the altar. Amen. 
Hallelujah. God's getting ready to do something this morning. Hallelujah. God's getting ready to do something this morning. Now we know one thing. Before you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, we must repent of our sins. Amen. So we're going to lift our hands in a moment, and we're all going to repent of our sins. Some of you prayer warriors gather around behind. Help me pray for all these people. I cannot pray for everybody by myself. Hallelujah. Confess your faults, he said. And he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I want everybody to lift their hands. Close your eyes. Look up towards heaven. Father, forgive me of my sins today. Forgive me of every lie that I've told. Forgive me of everything that I've taken, oh God, that wasn't mine for stealing. Forgive me for bitterness in my heart, Lord. Forgive me for envy, for jealousy, for malice. God, forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of my immorality. Forgive me of my greed. Forgive me of my pride today, God. Forgive me of all my sins this morning, Lord. Search my heart today. Create in me a clean heart, I pray, God. Renew a right spirit within me. Whatever God has brought to your mind, ask God to forgive you of that thing this morning. Maybe you've done something to somebody. Maybe you've talked about somebody. I don't know what it is, but ask God to forgive you. Ask God to cleanse you. Ask God to pour his spirit out upon you. Hallelujah. I need you today, God. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my faults. Forgive me of my failures. Forgive me of my mistakes, God. Forgive me for not praying. Forgive me for not fasting. Forgive me, oh God, for not being the person I need to be. Oh Lord, forgive me of every idle word that I've spoken. Every evil thought. Cleanse me today. Wash me today. I repent today, God. Let your blood cleanse us and let your blood wash us. Let your blood sanctify us this morning. Hallelujah. Let that blood that flows from Calvary, let it flow over us this morning and forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Hallelujah. I ask you, Jesus, create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us today, God. Renew a right spirit within me today, God. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your spirit. Fill me with your anointing. Now I want you to begin to magnify him and thank him for forgiving you. He said that he is faithful. He is just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. It's in the middle of praise. It's in the middle of worship. It's in the middle of your magnifying God that God pours out his spirit. Oh, God, we invite you to come into our hearts today. We invite you to come into our soul today. We invite you to fill us with your precious gift, God. Come into my heart today. Come into my mind today. Come into my soul this morning, God. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit upon me today, God. I believe. I believe. I believe today, God. That's it. Come on. Worship him. Thank you for forgiving me, God. Thank you for forgiving me. He said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. God wants to fill you today. If you'll just get lost in praising Him, if you'll just get lost in worshiping Him in the middle of your praise, in the middle of your praise, in the middle of your praise, the power's gonna come. The anointing is gonna come. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage. It's the anointing that sets the captive free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for setting me free. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for washing me. Thank you for your power. That's it. Come on. It's you and Jesus. It's you and Jesus. Talk to him this morning. 
It's you and Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Not my will, but thine be done. Have your way, God. Have your way today, God. I surrender. I surrender. I can't do it by myself anymore. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Yea, Lord, pour out your glory.